Good evening and welcome to the policy subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee, October 19th, 2021. We have uh, three items on the agenda for this subcommittee meeting. Um, we're gonna do a review of student handbook, of the student slash parent handbook, um, and then any other business, and then adjournment. Um, so basically, we kinda wanna start off, we're starting with the, the high school handbook, and then we'll um, go further as, as needed, but uh, for this evening, we'll just start with that. Um, so, does anybody have anything that they, I know I've got a few items, uh, does anybody want to jump in with any particular items from the high school handbook that they think we maybe want to have a conversation about? Let me get to the right parts. Is it a certain item? Mrs. Sullivan. Are we reviewing a certain item because yeah, well, we don't usually do this this early. I know, and so uh, to be, how do I put this? To be a little blunt about it, we usually do this in late March. We get the books, and two weeks later, we vote on them and approve them. And there's been a lot of things that have changed. There's been a lot of talk about restorative measures in, in school discipline. Um, there's, you know, just a lot's happened, and I thought maybe it might be, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world um, if we started a little sooner and took a more deep look at this as opposed to our typical, you know, we look at it for two weeks and then that's the end of it. I just, I mean, again, if, um, I apologize if members of the committee disagree with, with that opinion, but I just thought it was the right thing to do, especially with a lot of the things going on in the world and in the school this day, you know, these days. Well, no, I don't disagree. I'm just wondering why we were doing it earlier, because I oh, don't know. That is why we are doing it early. Um, but usually the principals, if I'm right, usually make changes. Well, the, um, what happens is the principals and the assistants will um, recommend changes. Um, usually they're subtle changes. Uh, you know, the things that have come up during the year, they make notes. Um, then we meet about them, um, and then our attorneys always review them every year for any changes in the law um, to make sure everything is up to date with uh, our discipline law, Chapter 222, making sure all due process is in the book the right way, um, anything to do with civil rights, Title Title IX, uh, that all has to be in. So um, so the changes that, you know, that that's all that is the law that has to go in. Um, and then everything else is up to us to discuss as far as you know, dress code, cell phone policy, um, tidy to class, tidy to school, attendance policy. Um, that is what, you know, we have a control over a lot of, you know, there's obviously bullying and cyberbullying um, language. It has to be in there for the law, rightfully so, obviously. And then, um, you know, there's several items that it's left for us to, you know, review every year, like lockers and, um, you know, restricted areas is a bunch of smoking, um, you know, students that continually, um, you know, vaping, those kind of things. Um, we should be reviewing um, classroom behavior, um, all those things that we can actually um, look at and modify every year. Right, and the other thing that I think isn't a terrible idea, the superintendent and I had had a conversation that maybe one approach <clears throat> this time because there's, there's a lot of, I know a lot of teachers have reached out to me with concerns. We've obviously heard from parents the last few weeks. Um, maybe we set up a task force um, with some teachers and an administrator and even you know one or two school committee members um, that can parents as well uh, parents you know let's get all hands on <clears throat> on deck and and look at it and and um, make sure that <clears throat> you know we're addressing the issues that come up in the most you know restorative and productive way for the students um, you know and then yeah I mean there's things like the cell phone policy there's things like you know again 
We've always said we've had some discussion on dress code. That seems to be the one that every year when we look at these gets some discussion. Um, so I don't know what everybody would thoughts on that are um, as far as having a task force to kind of do a more in-depth look of these. I mean, this doesn't have to, we don't have to go a full hour. This can be a very brief discussion if, you know, we want to just take it to the task force and then come back with something later. Um, but again, you know, uh, actually, can we talk a little bit about, and I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, one of the things I think we should talk a little bit about is chapter 222 yeah. and how that basically <clears throat> changed things, you know, and kind of what limits that puts on, you know, how we do things. Yeah, so chapter 222, it left alone. Um, so there's three sections of it, uh, 37H, which is a felony in school. Um, 37H and a half is a felony outside of school. And then 37, everything else under school discipline falls under 37H and three quarters. So that's cutting class, toddy for class, that's anything to do with demerits, um, disruptive behavior, um, anything that falls that obviously is not a crime that's committed falls under 37H and three quarters. And when you're dealing with suspensions for, um, you can't have prescribed, like when I was a, a student here, and also when I was a, a assistant dean and a dean um, that was pre-chapter 222, you could have, like, if you did, so basically if you were late to school 15 times, you got um, a one-day in-school suspension. If you got sent out of a class, you got seven demerits. If you sent out, and when you had 21 demerits, that equaled you needed to get a consequence, which was either an in-school suspension, an out-of-school suspension. Um, that was all, like, prescribed and you would follow that chart, that's no longer allowed. Um, you have to actually follow a process where if a student ends up, and you say if they end up with 21 demerits because they've cut class or they have was sent out of class for being disruptive, then um, the dean would send a letter home to the parent requesting them to come in for a meeting, a due process meeting. Um, so they could, you know, the student would have a chance to obviously defend themselves, and then the dean at that time would make, or the principal would make a decision on whether there's a consequence given. Uh, before Chapter 222 was basically, if you got 21 demerits and um, you were getting, and you came down to the office, you would say, you, you know, you got 21 demerits and you have two days of in-school suspension starting tomorrow and the next day. And there would be no, that was pretty much it. There was really no due process. Um, so what chapter 222 was put in, they, those meetings now have to be done with a parent. You just can't say to a student, you have an in-school suspension or an out-of-school suspension unless you have a full hearing. Uh, parents need to be notified in advance in writing. Um, and then uh, the dean or the principal makes a decision. Um, and decisions should be progressive discipline instead of like, okay, you did this um, this many times, you got thrown out of class five times this week, and now I'm going to put you out for two days, an out-of-school suspension. It kind of, you know, it, it, you're supposed to do progressive. Like you start with like a, you know, maybe a detention or maybe a handbook course or a Saturday work. Those things need to be put in place before you move to the, you know, more harsher suspension. So they try to take away a lot of the punitive um, discipline that was given for, you know, those kind of infractions. Uh, they put a lot more due process in, and um, they want you to look at restorative practices rather than suspension. They, they really wanted to cut down on out-of-school suspension. So that was the spirit of the law and how much it's changed. All right. Because so when I was, well, back then, was when I was assistant dean, you'd have a chart on the wall, and... And, you know, if you did this this many times, you automatically got this. Right. You can't have that anymore. <clears throat> Everything has to go through a due process. It's just like, you know, every, if you were 15 days late for school, then you were getting a two-day out-of-school suspension, and there was no discussion. <laughs> That's what you got. Right. So now they'd have the discussion. They might still get the two days, uh, or maybe not. So I guess that's – so 
take the same scenario. You get 15 days out of school. You have the discussion. The parents present for the discussion, and so you both you're supposed to, um, you know, you're supposed to pretty much. We should be meeting parents before that. So if you, you know, the the issue was before that, you know, kids would build up demerits quickly, and then the first call you made to a parent was when you were telling them the child was getting suspended, right. and that's never a good way to introduce yourself the first time to a parent. It should be, you know, um, your child's been late or they've cut in cl they've cut class, you know, now three times, and it should be a phone call saying, you know. It's not going very well. Can you come in? We can have a conversation of what's going on rather than the first phone call being, hi, I'm Mr. So-and-so, and your child's now suspended for three days. And see, that's, right. what's, that's what this is taken away. Like, you have to, if you're going to have give a child any discipline at all for any of their behavior, you have to have the due process hearing, where before you didn't have to have that hearing, unless it was a suspension that was going to be more than 10 days. Okay. That, like, before 2015, before Chapter 222, if, you have, if anybody was going to be suspended for more than 10 days, you had to have a due process hearing. Um, anything under that, you did not have to. Okay. Right. And so, so now, if a student's given a detention, you have to? Or is that something they can do without? Detention is not considered a suspension. They, you, okay, it's just suspension. Yeah, so it's just okay. anything, even an in-school. So an in-school suspension... Um, an out-of-school suspension, um, those have to have due process hearings. Also, the law changed if, um, if a child's removed from their class uh, more, for more than half the school day, that's considered an in-school suspension. Okay. Or if you, say, um, if you say to a parent, you need to come pick your child up because they're not having a, a good day because there's been some behavior issues, and if they go home for more than half of the school day, that's considered an out-of-school suspension. Okay. Right, so now you have to have a hearing. Now that all has to be documented. I'm sorry, Judy, go ahead. So Chapter 222 already changed the discipline that's methods in the schools. Correct. And that's been in about five years? That went in 2015, um, July 1st of, I believe, so 2015. Yeah. It's about six years ago. Because I remember now. when that went in. Okay, so. So we've, we, we have trainings every year for our principals, assistant principals, our deans, and Assistant Deans and us, Paige Tobin, our attorney who handles... Is that um, a state thing, the Chapter That's two? a state law, yeah, Massachusetts yeah. General Law, Chapter 222, and it's Mass General Law is 34, I mean, um, 37H, 37H and a half, and 37H and three quarters. Okay. Um, and one of the things that came up from some of the students that came and spoke at some of our recent meetings was about bullying. And I know that there's a section in here that, you know, it defines what bullying is and, and says that bullying of any kind is unacceptable. And um, so that's there. But I guess, you know, I didn't see anything about it. And maybe I missed it. Um, you know, what do we do with those matters? How do we handle those matters? You know, some of the students said that, you know, nothing happens. And so that was concerning because I was like, okay, well, do we have a policy as far as what do we do when, when someone's reported bullying to us, and how is that's that? Law, that's law, too. So okay. basically, you have to do a full investigation. You have to fill out the bullying forms. Those have to be submitted to Sharon's office. We do have to submit those to the state as well. Okay. So a full bully investigation has to be done. Um, and um, if a bullying situation rises to the level of where it becomes harassment, sexual harassment, physical those, those kind of things, then we would bring the police in to investigate as well. Um, but you have to do a bullying investigation. The principal and the assistant principal, once bullying is um, alleged, then you have, to, you have to do a full investigation. You have to interview witnesses, obviously the victim, the, you know, the perpetrator, the accused. They all have to be interviewed. Uh, obviously, everybody has due process, the, the victim as well as the the person that's being accused of bullying and you have to do a full investigation and that if bullying is proven then obviously you have to put consequences in place you'd have to have a due process hearing with the parent um, if you're going to use a put a suspension in place for bullying okay so when people talk about restorative measures you know and so we see in here you know all right if you 
you know, whatever the infraction might be, you know, absence or, you know, classroom behavior, whatever, you know, what are restorative type? Well, restorative would be um, if two kids are in a fight, you know, when they came back, it's just instead of just putting them both back into, you know, they should actually sit down, meet with each other and figure out why they got into a fight and how we could not, you know, talk about why, what was, why it all happened and then how they can put it behind them. Restorative practices with teachers if, you know, student continues to have issues with the same teacher and continues to be thrown out of class, um, then you would, you know, if they were, you, you would then have what they would, they call them circles, you would sit down, have a conversation with the teacher of why, you know, why does this keep going? Why, what's, where's the disconnect? What, you know, those are the, you know, those are the kind of things you do with restorative practices. Okay. You have to, it, restorative is building relationships. Right, right. Um, okay. And kind of getting to the root of kind of the root the cause problem. of the like why, I mean, a lot of times when students are getting sent out of class, um, there's other things going on in the, in, the, in the child's life that you want to kind of get to the root of that issue and find out why, you know, they continue to act out, continue not to do their work, continue to disrupt the class. So you kind of try to get to the root of that problem to stop it because, um, you know, at the end of the day, there's 24, 25, 26 other students in the class that need to learn. So, you know, you need to solve the problem and stop the disruption because one student can disrupt another 25 who are there to get an education and we need to make sure we protect those rights as well. Right, right. Go ahead. Would that include PM mediators too? Yes, that's where we've PM been mediation. doing PM medi mediators in the elementary schools since way back. Yeah, when PM media is really something we really have to concentrate on getting. You know, we do have it, but we need to get it back. Really build it up. Are we again. still doing it in the elementary schools? I don't, I'd have to. Ch I don't think they do it as much in elementary. With you know, the elementary has been using. Um, they're, you know, trauma sensitive. They use the PBIS, positive behavior intervention system that has really worked well. It's moved into the middle schools. Um, oh, that, so that, that system what's has worked well. What's the positive? What was the name of that? You just positive said? behavioral intervention system. Yeah, so what, now what is things that? are put in place when the child is starting to really, you know, be disruptive. I, again, it's to get to the root of the problem and put systems in place of praise, feedback, um, you know, points, it's just helping them, um, you know, really positive, be positive about when, you know, they're doing the right things. And, um, you know, the elementary schools and middle schools have done a nice job of, of using that system. And I shall have, um, I can have John Snellgrove and some of the elementary people come and do a presentation on that the next time. Um, and we can have Cindy Burns come and do a presentation on restorative justice because she has been using that. Um, over at um, restorative practices at the um, at the Keith Center, so we can have her give a presentation. She's done that for a couple of years, um, and then I had another one, and I lost my PBIS and trauma sensitive, and I think that's it. Positive, Positive behavioral behavior. intervention system. Okay, so that kind of took the place of the. Yeah, mediators a little bit. Kind of. Um, uh, some of the uh, elementaries do um, choose to be nice as well. Oh, yeah. Which yep. is a really nice program where, um, you know, I think I want I don't know if all of them do it, um, but several of them do the choose to be nice. And um, they get T-shirts. You know, it's just basically being nice to each other. And that's kind of a real help with, you know, and it, the, cut down on bullying and there's like a pledge that the kids, is there like a pledge? Yeah, there's a the pledge that they say every yep. day to, for positive behavior. For, exactly. And they do a pledge them. for the choose to be nice as well. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Great. Um, and there's actually, in the back, is where I knew it was in here, the level of type of offenses and what types of measures we might use. <clears throat> Uh, 
um, you know, yeah, interventions and consequences in the in back. these situations. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, part of why we're we're here is because we've heard from the the public that there's concern. You know, I mean, we've had a lot of parents come with concerns about what's been going on in in schools, and that we're not that not that we're not, but that you know, it's not improving. And we've had students come and talk about that too. Um, so it just seemed like you know, might not be a bad idea to review our policies, make sure that. We have the right policies in place that they're being enforced and then um, make whatever changes are, are appropriate. I've heard from a lot of people about um, you know, cell phone use, which I know is a, a touchy subject for a lot of people, um, you know, uh, and, and how that can be disruptive and contribute to some of the shenanigans we've seen going on. So. Um, didn't we just change the cell phone? Did we change Yeah, something? I'm looking for it. Because they didn't used to ha be able to have them in school, and now, yeah, I just, I read it earlier. It said that they can have them, but they have to be off during the day. They're, they're allowed to be used during certain times of the day. Right, and if the teacher and calls the for teacher it, they can. if the teacher allows them for yeah. being used in class. Um, yeah, I think we just changed that like two years ago. <clears throat> I can remember correctly. <laughs> Good memory. I can't remember what I did two days ago. <laughs> Cell phone and electronic devices. There we go. Inside buildings and designated areas prior to 710, after 159. Between 710 and 159, we only use for educational purposes and only when approved by a supervising teacher. Student fails, follows, policy may be subject to disciplinary action noted in Group A. Um, we're not responsible for stolen devices, et cetera. Okay. So, I mean, uh, I wonder if some of this is a, an issue of enforcing these policies. You know. I mean, I don't know, I'm not here in the high school every day, so I can't say that for sure, but you know, when you hear some of the stuff that we've heard recently, you wonder is, is, some, of the, is some of it that we just need to have everybody uniformly enforcing all of this, you know, and you can't have some that do and then others don't, because then the kids say, well, this teacher doesn't and this you know, person doesn't. Um, just looking at group A. So, no, Mr. Sullivan. I have one question. With the recent, uh, just recently when somebody came in with a loaded weapon, is it stated in here? Oh yeah, is weapons. We um, no lethal weapons should be brought in. Yep, absolutely. They're I, I was looking, I didn't see it in there. It's state law. It's state law? Yeah, regardless of schools in session or breaking you know, no weapons up. Not even myself. I can carry a firearm on school grounds, unless if I'm acting in my official duty. Okay. Well, I was... I'll find it for you. I just got to get the right page. I was just thinking that if we, if we put up a sign out front saying that, that no weapons, like that they do at the VA hospital, you can't bring weapons on the property. If that's a state law, why can't we just put a sign up to let people know? Yeah, that's, that's actually taught in the, uh, the LTC when you take the class. Yeah, the NRA. They actually teach you go over those laws. So okay. They, whoever has a firearm license does know that you're not supposed to carry on any school grounds. That's across the state. School right. banks. School banks to certain places, bars, restaurants, certain places that sell that serve alcohol. You can't have it in there as well. Well, I was just this student. I'm sure didn't have a license to carry a gun. No. You gotta be 21. So he didn't know. Unless if they're in military, which I doubt. I can't imagine that anybody doesn't know you can't bring a gun into school. 
do respect. I just want why is it in here? That's all. <clears throat> yeah, no, it should be in here. A lot of schools already not. have it posted outside. A lot of schools already do. I don't know in Brockton, but I've seen them on other. Really, grounds. it's yeah. in here. Yep. It's, it's in actually the this highest level of discipline. Group D, possession, dis, um, possession, distributing of any weapon, real or simulated, such as a firearm, ammunition, knife, explosives, or any other object that can be used as a weapon. What there page is that? Page sixty. Yep. It's the last page, and it's you know. Obviously, one of the most severe, where it's short-term, long-term, and school police notification, you know, are the the Group D violations. Obviously, depending on which of these, would probably, I'm sure, dictate whether it's a short-term, long-term, or police involvement, school police involvement. So the the this, the student um, with the weapon, that's a suspension under 37H, which is a felony in school. If we were notified of a student that was charged with carrying a weapon outside of school, that's a 37 H and a half, and we would have a due process hearing on that when we're notified. We are notified by the district attorney and the police if students are charged with um, felonies outside of school, um, and the felonies that would face 37 H and a half suspensions are, um, you know, violence. Um, um, assaults, sexual assaults, um, weapons, drug, selling of drugs, those are, we get notified of all those. Okay. And that student would have 37H and a half hearing. Okay. Right. So, I mean, I don't know if there's any other thoughts on this. It seems like we've got pretty good policies in place. It's just a matter of consistent equal enforcement, it, just my opinion, I might be way, way off base. Well, it's, it's that, and it's also getting these kids back to used to being together in school again. Right. Uh, and again, I'm not making excuses for poor behavior. I'm not making excuses for, but this is, you know, and I'm not saying we don't need to clean things up, but this is happening everywhere. Yes. And it's not just urban. I hate when people pull, call out the urban uh, districts because it, it's not fair because it's happening in suburban high schools as well. Um, fighting, cuts, cutting class has been, I talked to two suburban superintendents and they have, one has a school of about 1,700 and he, they had 1,000 cut classes um, in the month of September. Wow, and 1,700 been, kids. Yeah, so it has been a difficult trans back, transition back to school and again, I'm not excusing poor behavior because I don't tolerate it. I'm more of an old school <laughs> kind of person. And, but this has been a tough transition back. And, but however, we do absolutely when we can't tolerate violence, we can't to tolerate weapons, um, and we can't tolerate blatant disrespect for authority, meaning teachers. Um, right. You know, when you're asked to stop, you need to stop. If you're asked respectfully that you need to put your ID on or put your phone away or you know we can't tolerate swearing at teachers or blatant disrespect that just can't happen um, and you know and obviously pulling fire alarms yeah um, that's you Did are, I see that under group you D? will be charged for pulling the fire alarm that's a major safety issue and I don't want people to be under the uh, misconception that you're not going to face serious, there's always a due process hearing, but you're going to face a serious, serious issue if you're pulling the fire alarm. Because um, that's, that's, a, that's a safety issue. Right. Well, and I think that it's against the law. I and mean, it is against the can't, law. You can't pull an alarm in any building that's a false nope. alarm. Nope. Um, I have a quick question, Mark. Go ahead. So we hand them these books the parents and our students, and we expect them to read the books, and then they sign and they acknowledge that they've gone through and understand. Have we maybe think about maybe doing an assembly, um, getting them together, and really explain to them how serious some of these actions are? They have. The high school has done. Cliff, the second week of school, did assemblies for every grade. 
freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors. Yep. Okay. Because I'm thinking maybe try a different approach rather than just hand them a book and expect them to go through the book, sign up. But I mean, again, we probably have more of the parents that are looking into these, you know, reading the books and going over them. I mean, I remember as a student, you know, we'd get the handbooks, but, you know, we're dealing with a lot of serious stuff right now where just let them understand the consequences, um, you know, and how serious, you know, they can, they can seriously get in trouble for something just, you know, like, again, you have the 37, 37 and a half, 37 and three quarter. Sometimes just a, a reminder as to you can really change, you know, you can change your life by just making yeah. the right decision and not, you know, think twice before you do something because these are some serious charges that they can, you know, that's going to change their, can change their career path as far as, you know, their academics um, and whether or not they can stay within our school district. Right. So... You know, again, if, if they're doing the assemblies, I mean, that's great. It's just, you know, I think a, a constant reminder. Right. Especially with what we're dealing with right now with the TikTok and all these challenges. Now, are those fire alarm issues that we're dealing with, is that still one of the challenges with the TikTok? I or haven't seen anything on TikTok for fire alarms. I don't know if it's... I saw something. I'm not first. sure if it was TikTok or another I don't challenge. Know if it's, but it could be. I, I saw the fire alarm. Open TikTok. <laughs> Okay, it wasn't? Okay. Just so, you know, it's a safety thing. You're disrupting the... the Absolutely. Yeah, you know, you're disrupting everyone. Absolutely. And that's under D. D. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the big ones. Yeah, D will have... Fire alarms and... Fire alarms, um, drug <laughs> offensives, chronic school offenders... Um, sexting, sexual behavior, civil violating civil rights of others, making racial or religious or sexual slurs, verbal remarks, wearing clothing or pins that are offensive, race, racial, religious or sexual slurs, um, any mockings of books that um, clothing, those kind of things in the sexual or racial nature is obviously that's under group D. Hazing is under group D. Um, you know, false fire alarm, fighting, um, acts of theft, or any type of harassment or sexual harassment, bullying, cyberbullying, any assault of students or staff, um, any gang activity, and obviously acts of arson. You know, those things are all Group D, which all, all right. carry uh, a minimum of out-of-school suspension to a maximum of expulsion. <clears throat> and just so everybody's clear on expulsion, um, you can expel students, but you're technically the days of expelling them and saying, good luck finding your education somewhere. That's not how it's done anymore. At Chapter 222 has changed that as well. You can expel students. Um, we have. Um, but you have to provide them with their edu their education. So either virtually or out, out of district placement or some other means of education, but you, we are still responsible for their education. Before Chapter 222, it was, even with the felonies, it would be you're suspended until you're adjudicated or um, the case is solved, um, and um, you, you would give no educational services. They were just out of school, and it could be up to a year, two years. Um, or if you just expelled them, there was, you, there was the school system had no obligation to provide any education for those students. Now under 222, even expulsion, um, again, you can do it, but you, you do have to, the school, it's on the onus on the school system to get them their education until, Age 16. until they're, you know, till graduated they, actually. Till they graduated. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, and there's a lot of stuff in here in level one, level two, you know, calls to parents. And so that's the part where, you know, and I know there's an election in two weeks. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but we need support from home. If, you know, we get a call, if you get a call from your kid's teacher, then, you know, you need to help us out and, and on that side of it. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, I, was, I was shocked by one of the comments of one of the parents that the kids had outsmarted us and, 
and they were uh, entrepreneurial and being creative. Like, no, that's the exact opposite of what, uh, of how that needs to be reinforced at home. Um, so again, you know, maybe election year dumb thing to say, but it, we, it, it's real and that, that's the reality. We need the, you know, at home for them to also have reinforced that these behaviors aren't acceptable. And I know most, most of our parents do. Most of our parents do. But, um, you know, again, just, you know, um, as I think we've said in the past, um, you know, we, we need parents to be our partners. <clears throat> Absolutely. Mark, I have a quick question. Go ahead. Superintendent, um, and I apologize if I miss this. Where in here is damage to um, school property? It's probably, is that something that we're... Probably Group C. I mean, that's yep. something we never really had to deal with before. Group C, top of the page, top of page 59. Yeah, it's the third one on C. If you go to page 59 at the top, it's the second in the chart below. Oh, there we go. Right okay. under cheating. Oh. At all five levels of discipline are available, which obviously depends on the severity of the Yeah, there's defacing, group A, you know. There's group B, group C, and group D. So. And it actually will give you the chart, which tells you up to what the minimum of this, the maximum of that. So. Uh, Okay. Any other thoughts or questions, um, Mr. Rodriguez? Mike, when <clears throat> when the student gets this book and they're supposed to take it home, um, now with this year we did it all electronically. Electronic. So actually, parents would have it electronically on their team site, email. Uh, we did print copies um, just in case parents didn't have access to it. Um, we had a lot more parents actually you know, make sure they signed off on it this year. We get, we reached a lot more and then it's obviously translated in all uh, okay, that was languages. Yeah, we, question. Every, now, every language, it's in Portuguese, Spanish, uh, Cape Verdean Creole, Haitian Creole, uh, also French. Um, so we, we cover, we have to, all the, and when we send out the um, letters for the due process hearings, those have to be, you know, obviously we, we code um, if the family speaks a second language at home and we have the letter has to be sent in English and in native language as well. Now, is there any point on the first day, the first week of school that this book is actually reviewed with any of the students? Almost like, for example, what I do for work. Yeah, a lot of the schools they, will they come in, will do the assemblies and do it in their classrooms. Here at the high school, they've did, they did assemblies, but we also... In a lot of schools, I know the middle schools and the high school, the first, and actually I put this in when I was an assistant, I think I was a dean at the time, we actually were looking for more interventions at the time. So a student's first suspension, if it wasn't for like a major issue, um, if it was for being thrown out of class or cutting class or being tidy, we put it in a hand, the first consequence they got was a handbook class because we, we realized that at that time. So you'd have to stay after school with the assistant dean in the, for an hour, and they would highlight the issues that get you in trouble, the cutting, the disrespect, phones, not having your ID. Um, and the handbook class was like the first consequence for, you know, for the infractions that are not considered major. Um, so they still do that here at the high school. Um, and I know that the middle schools and the elementaries, they each do it different as far as the you know, age level appropriate. but. We can actually review the things we do and make sure that. So it's more of like, okay, I got in trouble. Now I'm going to go and review this prior to me saying, okay, the first day of school, the first hour or the second hour, whatever. It's, it's an orientation period where we're going to review the student handbook, the do's and don'ts, what you should know. Yeah, no, it's actually something we can do better. Absolutely. On to For the first Mr. few days of school, yep. To Mr. Rodriguez and Ms. Asak's point, because you both raised this, 
I'm wondering because we, if I understand right, the, the one of the the real trouble spot this year. This is not a knock at any particular group of students, but the freshman class we've had a lot of challenges with. Is that accurate? It's been a challenge with a lot of students and throughout the gamut, actually. Okay, um, so but really freshmen, are, freshmen, again, have been a lot of discipline issues, uh, sophomores as well. But, again, these are students who were last in school when they were in the sixth grade, the last full right. regular year. And then the 10th grade is their last regular year was seventh grade. So they've, you know, freshmen and sophomore have been, but it's... Well, that's why it's not limited just to them. Okay, so I miss that was a yep. misunderstanding of mine. I'm glad I yep. cleared that up. But I, I guess what I was getting to, and, and it sounds like it may not really be the cure. All right, well, I don't know if any of it's the cure, but a, a thing to do is, you know, do we have for incoming? Start with freshmen. Maybe it's everybody. You know, at the you know on the first day of school or at the beginning of the year, some kind of. For everybody, a handbook review. Maybe it's somehow. I don't they know. do do it during the freshman orientation. They do. Of the summer. Okay, um, so that's happening. That, which is and very well attended, obviously. But I think Mr. Uh, Rodriguez and Joyce, and you're right. I think we I think it's something we can do the first couple of days in school to reinforce it at all levels. Right. Maybe that's the answer. Yep. Since, since the issues are at all levels, I know we've been talking a lot about ninth grade because they haven't had a normal school year in so long. Yep. Um, maybe that's where but I But it's all, I mean, it's all idea. levels. I mean, you know, right. first graders have really never had a normal school year. And right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, it's all levels that have struggled with coming back to school fully in person, especially a district like ours that we, you know, you obviously were fully remote. Right. Um, for most of the year and then hybrid and then so yeah there's there's things we can do better okay well and we can work on on that for obviously for next year i mean you know we can't you know we can't re re um rewrite history but nope. um and then uh, and i i'll get to you in one second miss asac um i i was wondering too ah oh, dang it i totally just lost oh you've talked about you know how basically we've talked we saw that very powerful graphic that was put up about how long it's been since certain kids were in a normal school year and some like you said have never had one some it's been a couple of years year and a half two years and how we've got to get them used to being around each other again what are we doing on that currently or what can we do well this the adjustment councils are spending a lot of time um, we've got extra, every school now is, we've beefed up, thanks to you. Um, all our smaller early elementary, the smaller elementary schools went from one adjustment council to two. Right. Our larger elementaries went from two to three. Uh, Brockton High has gone from six to ten. Um, so, I mean, that's been something that we've done. I know in the elementaries, the adjustments councils go in and do social skill activities with, with the students. Up here at the high school, they've. Um, I talked to Gary Gillito today, and um, he's been doing um, anger management groups, stress management groups. Um, when students get into a lot of issues, when they're sent out of class a lot, they are referred to the adjustment counselors, and you know, it's just a, it's, it's a lot of volume this year. So, right. I know that we just put another ad out for adjustment counselors. We're going to try to add some more, um, but those are the kind of things that you know the. We got to do a lot of things to bring the climate culture things to kind of, right? You know, I think setting up peer mediation would definitely yep. be helpful I, as sooner than later. I know we had that at Southeastern when I was there, and it was effective in some cases and not at all in other cases. But you know, um, no, depends. this is good. The anger management, stress management classes—that's that's excellent, Miss Asac. Just to go back to um, reviewing the handbook with the students, I mean, we're in October. We have plenty of time to still enforce this as far as reviewing with them. And I wouldn't mind attending to see how they do it. And if we remind them a couple of times a year, we could help a student before they make a mistake that can change their um, academic path. So, you know, it just a, a constant reminder because, I mean, listening to some of the students at the last meeting, they're dealing with, I believe it was sexual harassment in the hallways. Uh, some of the girls were bringing that up and, um, you know, we're dealing with the bullying and, you know, issues that are coming up that students need to be reminded, you know, this isn't, you're not a little kid anymore. You are, but you're not because 
these are these are pretty serious um, offenses depending on what you're doing so I wouldn't mind um, we still have time we still have time in I mean it's still the first part of the year that we should get it now because we could probably help a lot of students avoid getting themselves in trouble in the future yep. so if, if they want to prepare something just something simple I'd be curious to see you know how they go about yeah, I can have these. them talk, come in and talk about what they've done. Yeah, it, it's just pretty simple. It shouldn't be that complicated. Review the handbooks, and you know we should do it at least at least once or twice a year. And if if we get a lot of repeat students that are having issues, then yes, you really need to sit down um, and go over this with us because I think we're going to help them in the long run rather than wait for them to mess up and then it might be too late for some of them. But that's just my opinion. I, I second that, especially with everything that's going on. Um, some of these kids need to be sit down and really be talked to. Um, at, you know, they're at the point where this can carry on and, and being an adult, you know, a senior. Yep. Um, I mean, you need to. I mean, when I was in school, um, I, Mr. Rowan, Mr. O'Brien, those are the two guys that come in and me talk to you, you know. It's, that can just turn around and change you. Well, and I want to say, I mean, these adjustment councils up here do an amazing job. I mean, you, oh, I'm, yeah. I, I mean, not, I don't want to miss, a lot is done. A ton is done. I mean, there's 4,000 kids here, and at the end of the day, we're dealing with probably about 200 out of the 4,000 that are issues. And that's, we got to remind ourselves that there's some, there's really good kids doing, making really good decisions. Um, and the ones that are not, we need to deal. But those kids are constantly working with adjustment council. I mean, we've, you know, we've put a ton of interventions. There's also inter how many interventionists here, Sharon? T At the high school? Yeah. So we have behavioral interventionists who are four of them, which we that came in a couple of years ago. There's MTAs that work with them. Pretty much all of them are former Brockton High students and have come back and, you know, relate to the kids well. I mean, I, w I look and see how the staff interact with the kids. It's positive, and that's why we can't tolerate when they're disrespectful um, and swear at teachers. That's, you know, that's the stuff that's obviously we can't allow. Um, but there is a lot that's done, a lot. That's done with, and I can have them come in. Right, there's more that we can do, and there's other things that we can do. But you know, I don't want people to think that there aren't things in place. That no, there's I'm, a lot of stuff in place. We do. We appreciate everything that everyone's doing. It's just I'm thinking the repeat, the students that have a lot of issues, and it's ongoing. We just maybe need to give them a little extra attention, and maybe just well, they, go they over get, things. They get a ton. <laughs> I, we help. You got. You want to come up and see. The students that get in trouble and how much time is spent with them between the adjustment counselors, the, the assistant dean, the behavioral interventionists. I mean, I've met with 10 of them over the last two weeks because, and these aren't about kids being expelled. It's basically they've had a hard time getting through <coughs> here. So I said, have them come to meet with me and the parent and let's try to come up with some ideas. So there's, there's a, a lot of time is spent with the students that are struggling, a lot. Good. But again, there are different things we can do always. Yeah, and I don't want anybody to get the impression that the, the committee doesn't recognize that the majority of the Brock, Brockton High students are doing great things, great and doing amazing work. But there are some that are having some issues, and you know, obviously there's been a lot of discussion on that lately, and we got to make sure that we're giving them the, 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 the effort and the attention that they deserve and that they need so that hopefully four years from now or however many years from now they can come out the other side as, as you know productive adults and go on to do the things you know whatever things they want to do from there so um, but uh, you know I'm, I'm glad to hear I didn't know we were doing anger management and stress management and those things and the reality is right this has been a, a, a lot of issues this year we're implementing these things you're not going to do one wave of anger management classes one week and all of a sudden everything goes away everything's fine like it's going to take time for these methods and repetition for these methods to be effective and you know work with students consistently who have these struggles before you'll start to see results but the results will be there 
Um, I know it's tough in the moment to, you know, a lot of people are frustrated, but, um, you know, I think, I think we're on the right path. We just maybe have to do a little bit better of a job enforcing some of these things because I hear some people say, well, you know, yep, the students swore at me. What can I do? Well, there are some things in here that you can do, you know, so let's do them. And, you know, um, so uh, that's all. But, okay. Any comments, questions on this matter tonight? Mr. Sullivan? Just one quick, are these handbooks available in different languages as well? All of them. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so you had mentioned, sorry. You had uh, putting together a, uh, a group to a mix of school committee members, family, uh, parents, students. Um, yeah. Could we try to get that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, Good. you know, I know you've got a parent group you meet with regularly. Yeah, we we can grab some people from there. I can reach out to the members of the committee, see who's interested. And, in, you know, obviously we all have, you know, work commitments too, so we'll see what schedules allow. Uh, but, yeah, we'll, we will work on that in, in, you know, short order and, and start to get that together so that we can, you know, continue to look at this and make sure that we've got the, the policies and the services in place that, that our students need so that, you know, again, they can get the most out of, being at Brockton High and, um, you know, go on from there. So. We're going to open it up to not just the high school. We're going to have middle school and elementary school yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We started with the, the high school, quite honestly, because that's, that's where we've been hearing the most um, issues. But if we're going to do this, let's do this, you know, across the board. I mean, if we're going to look at everything, let's look at everything. So, yes, to your, to your point, yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? nothing all right any other business for policy subcommittee well i guess i'll entertain a motion to adjourn motion to adjourn all right i got a motion to adjourn by mr sullivan properly seconded by mr minicello all in favor unanimous we are adjourned thank you